This program is made possible courtesy of the Wilfred Lai Partners. For prayers, inquiry and partnership, contact us on 0800-000-898 or send a text to 23378 and our team of counselors will help you. Shalom, praise the Lord. Welcome to Kingdom Queen's program. And uh, I believe that you are going to enjoy this time that we are going to spend with you. My name is Mrs. Rita Lai, uh, the wife of Pastor Wilfred Lai of Jesus Celebration Center and the General Overseer of is a celebration center globally we are here again to bring to you this program of kingdom queens we have tackled a few uh, issues touching the pastor's wife and before we get into that i want to ask mrs mula my co-host to greet you and say a few things before we continue amen thank you ma'am Shalom and praise the Lord. My name is Judy Mula, wife to Pastor Philip Mula, serving the Lord together with my husband at our center in Mombasa West, Jesus Celebration Center, Mombasa West, as the lead pastors there. We thank God, we are glad for you choosing this program, Kingdom Queen program. I want to assure you at the end of this program, that your life is not going to be the same again. I believe you are going to learn a lot and you are going to be transformed. Welcome. Thank you, Judy, for yes. that powerful welcome and the very powerful words to the pastor's wives and our viewers. We have uh, tackled a few, tackled a few sub uh, uh, few topics since we began, and this uh, day we want to talk about who are you to God as a pastor's wife. We have talked about the people's expectations, challenges, and all that. But I want us to look at how God looks at you. Who are you to God? I remember when Mrs. Mula was talking in a previous program, she said, some pastor's wives say that I was not called. He is the one who was called. And that comes out of a lack of knowledge of who you are to God. I want you to know, pastor's wife, that you are very, very important to God. God does not make mistakes. God takes his servants very seriously. And anything touching the life of his servant, including whom he will marry, it is a concern to God. So you are in God's plan. God knew you before you were formed in the womb of your mother. He knew whom you will get married to. So you are chosen. Your husband could have married any other woman, but he didn't. He married you. Mm -hmm. So you are God's choice mm -hmm. for his servant sure. as a wife. Sure. So I want to build your confidence and to show you that you need to take yourself as that. Mm -hmm. As what God takes you. Not how people take you. Mm -hmm. Many pastor's wives receive a lot of criticisms. We have heard people say, oh, the pastor is good. But his wife, they go even as far as calling her Jezebel. And many pastors' wives have, have looked at themselves through the eyes 
of the people, how people see them, what people say about them, and they have demeaned themselves. I am here to tell you that you are chosen by God. You are God's choice for his servant. You need to walk in that confidence. You need to agree with God. You need to know that God trusts you. He trusts you with the life of his servant. Mm -hmm. And you must know that you are chosen by him. We read a story about Moses in the Bible. And uh, we see how God defended the wife of Moses when Miriam and Harun rose against them. I want Judy to read for us Numbers 12 verse 1. The Bible says, and Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Verse 2. And they said, Had the Lord indeed spoken, all, spoken only by Moses? Had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord had it. Imagine that. Mm. The the Bible shows their heart. They say they complained and talked against Moses because of his Kushite wife. Mm. If you are married <laughs> to the servant of God, it doesn't matter where you come from. Sure. God has chosen you. Mm. You may not be from his tribe. Mm. You may, may not even be from his nation. Mm. You may not be from... Uh, anything to do with his background mm. but god has chosen you mm. they spoke and said that has god spoken to moses only does 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 indeed also speak to us mm. but the whole issue was about his wife mm. and we know very well what happened mm. when they touched moses because of his wife god called for a meeting mm. he called uh, mm. miriam Aaron mm. and Moses. Mm. And at the end of that meeting, Zipporah came out leprous. Mm. I want people also to know that when you speak against the pastor's wife, mm. you are pastor's wife. Mm. You are at a danger sure. of bringing mm. a curse upon your life. Mm. Because this is the wife mm. of the servant of God. Mm. And you should not speak against her. Mm. It is a tendency, it is, it is common mm. that people just take the pastor's wife as an ordinary person. Mm. But God <laughs> takes the pastor's wife very seriously. Mm. So you, you woman of God, mm. you are called. God knew you mm. before you were formed in the womb of your mother. Mm. He chose you. He anointed you. He separated you. So that you can be the wife of his servant. Mm. You want to build on that today. Mm. And to let you know that you need to arise. Mm. From where people have put you. Calling you names. Mm. Rejoicing when you are not in the service. Mm. Because they look at you as a barrier. Mm. <laughs> a barrier to the man of God. A barrier that hinders them from approaching the man of God. Mm. So... Uh, we want you to know that God really treasures you. He, 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 he has called you. Mm. He has not called your husband only. When he calls your husband, he has called you. Mm. And uh, you are making that journey together with your husband. I think at this point I would want to have Judy put an input on that before we progress. Yeah. On what God on what God thinks about Mm. You as a pastor's wife. Mm. Judy, please, can you have some input there? Yes. A pastor's wife, it is good to be very confident in that position where God has put you. As the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, that before I formed you in the womb of your mom, I knew you. Mm. And so God knew you before you were born that one day you will be married to, to his servant. It is not a choice because I know, especially like me, I didn't choose to be married by a pastor. Mm, I wanted God to be, had chosen. Yes, God had chosen me to be a pastor's wife. Mm. 
I wanted to be a good Christian, a good girl in the church, eh, to serve the Lord in my capacity. But God chose me mm. before the foundations of the heart. And that is why as a pastor's wife, you should know that you are not a mistake. Yeah. And you are not married to that man because you wanted to. But God knew you are the right person for that man. So work with confidence and uh, appreciate the position also. You should love it because that is where God has chosen you to be. In that story in Numbers where Mama said, when Aaron and Miriam stood to oppose Moses because of the wife, God called that meeting. And it was not a good meeting mm. because at the end of the meeting, because God was protecting Zipporah, Miriam was stricken mm. and Aaron by leprosy because of the wife of Moses. So there are people who try to rise against you as a pastor's wife in the church. And uh, you don't need to fight for yourself. God mm. is going to rise and uh, fight for you. As he fought for Moses, for Zipporah, the same. It's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. It remains to be the same. Mm. And so to us as pastors, wise, we should know that God is on our side. And uh, when people rise against you, you should be sure that God is going to fight the battle on your behalf. Mm. So let us work with confidence and let us know that we are in that position because God appointed us. We were not appointed by men. Mm. And it's a position whereby we cannot be replaced also. Yeah. You know, a deacon in church, a, a woman leader in church, after a, term, a period of leadership, they can be replaced. But a pastor's wife, Nobody can replace that woman from that position. Isn't yeah. that nice to know? <laughs> yes. You are permanent. You are permanently placed. Yeah, it's permanent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. So nobody, <laughs> even if they come speaking in tongues and whatever, is, even if they prophesy, your position cannot be replaced. Mm -hmm. God has placed you there with that purpose. Amen. Yes. And you know when I think about um, Moses' wife mm. and uh, how they came out of where, the, where Moses had gone to look after the, the mm. cattle of his father-in-law. Yes. And on the way God used Zipporah to save the Zipporah. life of Moses. Yes. So when I try to connect, what was this that was so special about this woman mm. that made God fight for her mm. to the point of mm. causing Miriam mm. to get leprosy? You know, Miriam was mm. a prophetess. She was. She was God's servant. Oh, yes. I remember when they crossed the Red Sea, she was the one who was leading mm, praise, praise and worship. And worship. She was yes. a praise and worship leader and mm. she was a prophetess. Mm. She was the sister of the man of God. Mm. She had a very high place mm. in, in, in the ministry of Moses. Sure. But God fought for Zipporah because Zipporah had a reason at a time that God's anger mm. was aroused against Moses, Moses. Mm. and Zipporah being a Kushite, being a woman that did mm. not come from Israel, yes. she saved the life of Moses mm. and she saved God from committing, mm. <laughs> if I can say it that way, mm. because he had he decided to kill Moses because mm. Moses was taking a step to go and deliver the children of, of Israel without fulfilling some things that were required of him yes. as 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 a as a as a, as, mm. as a person from God's people. Mm. So what you do to the man of God mm. as a wife mm. will cause God to favor you. Very true. You need to protect him. Mm. You need to stand and fight his mm. battles. Yes. Don't just watch him die. Mm. Arise and do something. Sure. And God counts it on you. You are the closest person to this man. Yes. God counts it on you mm. even to stop the anger of God. Yes. Abigail mm. is a wise woman. Yes. Arose and David was so happy that mm. she protected him yes. from shedding blood, blood 
and that is what a wife is supposed to do. Mm. Nabo died a natural death yes. without David having to kill so, him mm. because of a wise woman who was somewhere. Yes. So as as a wife of a of a pastor of a pastor, mm. you need to protect your husband from mm. uh, attacks that will come to him. Mm. Things can cut that can make him come out of the way. Yes. And God will fight your battles. Oh yes. God will fight her. When I look mm. at the life of Zipporah and the way God fought for her, mm. I accredit it to the time that she saved Moses' life. Sure. Because God had saved Moses' life from being killed mm. so that he can deliver mm. his people. Mm. And now when a time came for Moses to go and fulfill the, the call of God in his life, yes. Zipporah stood between God and Moses, Moses and saved him mm. from God himself. So, so that uh, means now a pastor's wife yeah. must be there to protect or to stand on the gap mm. on behalf of the husband. Yes. To protect them, to be there for their, to be their security also, mm. as much as they are there, to be their encouragement also. To shield them. To shield them. To protect them. Yes. To, not to watch the man of God just... Mm going to get lost not to get out also also out of the vision out of the vision yeah yeah so god counts on you that's mm. what i want to say god counts on you actually god trusted you with the life of his servant very true that's a very sensitive position god sure. trusting you a man is weak before his wife mm. he's he's uh, at uh, Vulnerable. Yes. He's vulnerable. vulnerable. Mm. But God has trusted you. Imagine. You are there when he's totally asleep. Mm. He cannot help himself. Yes. And God has trusted you to watch over him when he's completely asleep. He doesn't know. Imagine. He, God has trusted you that much. So how can you be just an ordinary woman? You how can't. can you take yourself just like anybody? Mm. God has chosen you. Yes. So Walk with confidence, fulfill your purpose mm. in that place, and just know it doesn't matter what everybody thinks about you. Yes, God thinks good about you, mm. and He will fight your battles. Mm. He will, He will, He will uphold you. Mm. He will, He will, uh, He will satisfy your life with good things mm. because what God calls you, He calls you for a blessing. Mm. You know, we are not called just to serve God. Sure, we are also called. For a blessing. For a blessing. Yes. As we serve God, mm. we are beneficiaries yes. of His blessing. Of His blessing. So we should never look at ministry, mm. and that is a, actually a, a a point of concern mm. to many pastors' wives. Very true. They say we have given ourselves mm. to serve God. Mm. They ask actually like Peter, mm. what shall we gain? Mm. Uh, my my classmates, my mm. my peers, my age mates have done so much. Mm. What shall I what, what shall I gain? When mm. God calls you to serve Him, mm. He calls you for a blessing. Very true. Our God is a blesser. He's a blesser. You will be blessed in this ministry. Sure, you will be blessed. Mm. So just trust God mm. the way He trusts you. Mm. Become partners with God, mm. and God will mm. bless you. Do you know? This blessing, you know, many think blessing is about material things. And they forget that even having peace, peace is and the blessing. unity between you and your husband yeah. is a blessing. Yeah. There are people who are sleeping in one house, but they are quarreling all through. all through. There is no peace in that house. So that is part of the blessing mm. as we serve the Lord. The God releases his peace. Yeah. Even also good health. And good Sometimes health. Sometimes I come to a point at the end of the year and I look at myself, I say, surely, I've never stopped, stepped to the hospital mm -hmm. myself, my children, my husband. We have never visited any hospital. Mm -hmm. The Lord has been That's gracious. It is a blessing. Yeah. And so, serving the Lord, when you accept that call as a pastor's wife and you give yourself to serve him, for sure, these blessings will follow you. Mm. People think driving big machines, living a luxurious life, it's a blessing. But the world, they are living that life, but they can't sleep. Mm. They don't sleep 
because they don't have peace. Yeah. But we are privileged, we are blessed. And so, to our pastor's wife out there, I want to tell you that serving the Lord in that position, as you support that man of God, this blessing will follow you. Your children will never lack school fees. You will never lack peace in your house. People will be commanded also by God mm. to bring to you what you need. Yeah. Yes. People whom you don't know. So there is joy and there is fulfillment mm. in first accepting that call. Yeah. Accepting that position. Then is serving the Lord in it. Amen. Yeah. That is very, very true. Sure. Accepting the call, mm. knowing what God thinks about you, mm. knowing that He has chosen you. Sure. Regardless of what is happening. Yes. Then you you begin to enjoy you the enjoy blessings, blessings of the Lord. the Lord. And when we look at it the way you have said, there are people that have got all yeah. the material things that they need, mm. but they lack peace. They lack peace. And you know, you will not only mm. get the peace, you will also mm. get the material blessings. Sure. Yeah. Yes. You will get them. You will. That's why you have said, mm. you never lack school fees. School mm. fees, you need, you, you need money, some material yes. things. God, mm. will, God will bless you. You may be at a place where you are struggling right now. Mm. Because we all have to begin from, from somewhere. Yeah. Also. We mm -hmm. begin from somewhere. Yes. And and God tests you mm. to see whether you are ready to receive the, mm. the, the material blessing. Mm. So it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Just hold on there. Sure. Hold on there. Mm. The Bible says he passed the children of Israel through the wilderness mm. to test their hearts. Mm. And at some points in the ministry, God would want to test your heart. Mm. Are you going for the blessings or mm. you are going to serve him? Mm. Are you, did you hearken to the call mm. because of what you would get? Mm. Or you hearken to the call to serve God? To serve God. Yeah. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom. of God sure. and his righteousness. Yes. And all these things they will shall be added mm. unto us. Now that God who speaks like that, he is our boss. He is yes. our employer. Very true. <laughs> and, and he will bless us as we serve him. Mm. So there is joy in serving the Lord. And mm. there is uh, that confidence that God knows I am here. Yes. Pastor's wife, God knows you are there. Mm. And his eyes are on you. Mm. He will bless you. Mm. And stand in confidence mm. that you are called by God. Sure. You are called by God. I think to, I like that part when you are God fights for a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. People gather, gather together to fight against you. Like Miriam and Aaron, they are a family. Yeah. At the same time, they are priests, they are prophets. Imagine. And they gather together to fight the wife of their brother Moses. And God wants to prove to them it is not the way you think. Mm. This, this is not a family matter. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is not a family matter. <laughs> so, <laughs> for God to prove to them, He had to call a meeting mm -hmm. to address them and to show them that, that is Zipporah matters to me very much. Mm -hmm. So, a pastor's wife in that position, you matter a lot to that man. Mm -hmm. okay? Even your own family members, where you are married, <laughs> your in laws, or where you come from, they can also gather together and they say, Since you came to this family, you have caused our son to be like this and this. Mm -hmm. yeah? You don't need to quarrel or to fight to for fight. yourself. Zipporah never fought for herself. Yes. God arose and fought for her. And I think she didn't she didn't know whether God is calling the meeting to fight for, for, for <laughs> to fight for her. Yeah, yeah she may she may not have known. Yes. She didn't know. Actually, actually she did she know. didn't know. Yeah. So when God is fighting for us, we will not even know. Mm. Yeah? But the, he will do it for yeah. his glory. So be calm, be yes. be be uh, at peace mm. because your battles are fought oh, yes. by the Lord Himself. Amen. I want at this session to talk about uh, the other side of the pastor's wife. We have mm. seen a good wife, mm. a wife that uh, knew her position, mm. and uh, a woman that knows that God has chosen her. And he has not just chosen her to be there, just chosen her for a purpose. Mm. And uh, I'm glad that you are realizing that God has chosen you and you are refusing to listen mm. 
mm. to everything that men may say about you. Mm. The other side uh, that we need to be aware of mm. is the fact that God, yes, has chosen you. Mm. But are you fitting in your position? Uh, when a pastor's wife does not realize that God is counting on her, God fights for her, she can just live like any other ordinary woman mm. and begin to talk like any other ordinary woman. Mm. But you need to realize that the man you are living with, the man you are married to, mm. is a servant of God. Sure. And just like God fights for you, mm. he also fights for his servant. Very so he will not allow you to rise up against his servant mm. and use your position to mock him. Mm or to disrespect mm. the anointing upon his life. Yes. He is the head. He is the one that God has called. He, he has called you also to be his wife. Mm. The Bible says very clearly that the anointing flows from, from the head of Aaron mm. down to his beards mm. and to his garments. Mm. The, the anointing flows from that man and God honors that anointing and you must honor it yourself mm. as well. Mm. Many times pastors wives forget and they take this money. This is my husband. Mm. They forget that he's anointed of God. Mm. He is a servant of God. The Bible says do not point a finger mm. at the anointed of, of God. God. Mm. You must respect the anointing mm. upon your husband who is the man of God is anointed by God mm. to do the work of God. Mm. The work of God cannot be done without an anointing. Mm. So that anointing that God has put, put on his head, mm. you must respect it. Sure. We see examples of mm. people that disrespected the anointing, mm. just taking it like it is their husband, taking it like it's ordinary. Mm. But godly things are divine. They are not ordinary. Sure. I want you to read for us uh, a scripture uh, that will show us uh, a woman that did not honor the mm -hmm. anointing upon her husband's life. She took him lightly. Mm -hmm. She took him like an ordinary man, like the king, and she was so concerned about his, mm -hmm. his uh, throne mm -hmm. that she, dis she disrespected okay. the anointing. Sure. Can you read for us, Judy, uh, in Second uh, Samuel mm -hmm. chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michelle, Saul's daughter, looked through a window, window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised she him. what? She despised him in her heart. Oh my goodness, she despised him. Okay, mm -hmm. she looked, she leaped. <laughs> <laughs> she she looked, she looked through a window mm -hmm. and saw King David, David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him. him in her heart. She despised him because he mm -hmm. was leaping and, and dancing, dancing before the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. And verse 20 says. Then David returned to bless his household, and Michelle, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the antlings of his servants, as one of the vain fellows, shamelessly uncovered himself. And David said unto Michelle, that is verse 21, mm -hmm. It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of his, of the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes. David returned to bless mm. his household. He was returning with a blessing. Yes. And he meets a woman that is agitated yes. by how she saw him dancing. Mm. And you know, I always ask myself, what was she doing up there? Because she was somewhere up 
and she looked through the window on the street mm. and she saw David dance. Why wasn't she there herself? To receive her husband. <laughs> and to, to rejoice together with the, the other people, people who are receiving the king. Who was receiving mm. the, the, he was bringing back the Ark of the Covenant mm. back to his place, to the city of David. Yes. And this was a big thing for David. It was an achievement. Mm. Are the things that your husband is doing that are so big to him, mm. just a small matter to you? Mm. So Michelle took it as a small matter and she was looking through the window. David was leaping and dancing because mm. it was an achievement for him. Yes. And after everything is finished, he comes back home. He's still remembering that he has a wife at home. Mm, yes. He comes carrying the piece of bread and the cake and the meat yes to come and bless his household because mm. that is what he did for everybody else he gave them mm. bread and he gave them meat to go back home and celebrate yes because of the achievement mm. of bringing the ark of the covenant yes. back home this was something that michelle would have really celebrated together with david mm. because they had been trying to bring the ark of the covenant to the city of David to his place. Yes. And it was difficult. Yes. And this day, they have achieved this. This mm. woman should have waited and told the husband, congratulations, my husband. Today, I, the ark is back. Mm. The blessing yes. of the Lord is back it's in our back. city. Mm. But she, she detached herself mm. from what was happening and what was very important mm. to her husband. Mm. And she mocked him. And the Bible tells us we have not read that part, but God closed her womb for mm. that time. Oh, yes. Because this, she disrespected the anointing of mm. God mm. upon the servant of God. That mm. should not be your portion. Mm. As a pastor's wife, mm. respect what God is mm. doing in his servant, respect what is so precious in the heart of your husband. Mm. And be involved. Be part of what he is doing. Exactly. His victories are your victories. Yes. So Michelle could be should have been there yeah. in the front leading the other women. Leading the other women. And the people in the palace mm. to receive this the, the king and the hack. Yeah. But instead she was peeping through the window. Which is so wrong. And and getting disgusted. You know, mm -hmm. I realized one thing. Mm. If you watch things from afar, mm. If you are not part of it, yes, and actually that is a place of some pastors' wives. Yes, they watch the ministry from a distance. Mm. When you watch something from a distance, you are not in it. You are likely to see the mistakes. You see many mistakes actually. You are likely to see mm. things going wrong. But yes. if you are part of it, you mm. have no time to to see the mistakes. You are part of the mistakes if mm. you are in it, mm. and you are in it. Mm. So let us jump in. Mm. And let us not uh, spectate us. Let us mm. not uh, disappoint God. Mm. God has trusted us. He has given us His men mm. to be an encouragement to them. Mm. So let us take that place. Let us not disappoint Him. Mm. Let us do what is expected of us. And Michelle lost. Uh, her fruitfulness, mm. her womb was closed. Yes. She could not bear mm. from this point because she dishonored. Mm. There are pastors who mm. I am sorry to say mm. have no fruit in their life. There is nothing they can show. Very true. They have nothing they can show. Mm. They, 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 they have not seen the fruitfulness of serving the Lord. Mm. You need to check your life. Do you mm. honor the anointing, the anointing yeah. upon your husband, yes. upon the man of God. Mm. You need to make a difference. This is my husband, mm. and at the same time, he carries the anointing, the anointing of God. Lord. If you disrespect that, mm. that, that anointing upon him, you may find yourself fruitless. You may have children, yes, mm. but what can you show for your life? Are you bearing fruit? Mm. Are you, are you uh, producing? Mm. Are you? Mm. The, the anointing works against you. Yeah. If you don't respect it, if you do, it works against you. Sure. You can begin to dry up mm. while you are still walking. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I it think it's a great privilege for us as pastors' wives. 
actually to be married by this man. Mm -hmm. And God trusting us with him and with the anointing in his life. Imagine. It is a great privilege. It is a very big I remember my mother, my mother-in-law, he usually tells me, I am the best woman in the whole world. Some gave birth to presidents and myself, I gave birth to a pastor. Mm -hmm. And the pastor is more highly placed than the president. Mm -hmm. That That's is a wise mom. woman, yeah. Imagine, she is very old, but she mm. normally tells me that. And I feel so good. Mm. So I think it's a it's a privilege, it's a privilege. that the Lord has given us. Yeah, to we should a man, happy. Yeah, who mm. hears from God. Yes, a man who serves God. Imagine that's that's a big privilege. It is. Yeah, and, and we should celebrate his life. Yes, whatever he is doing in ministry, mm. we should be part of it. Yeah, we should not be like Michelle. I can imagine this woman, the way she was agitated, she was so sad. She could see David, the way his, his clothes were going up and down mm -hmm. before the women. And this woman is like, what kind of a king is this? Mm -hmm. but the problem well, she is, saw the king more than the servant of God. Imagine. That is what she elevated, yeah. which is fame and glamour mm -hmm. and, and uh, popularity. Mm -hmm. That is what she saw. She, she she did not realize that mm. her husband was an anointed mm. was an anointed servant of God. Mm. And that is the mistake that pastor's wives make. So there are some pastor's wives who they listen to what the man is preaching there or the way he is dancing in the church or yeah. the way he's doing things in the church and they are like, what are you really what are doing? You doing? Yeah. Especially when he's there on the platform dancing with the choir, mm -hmm. and you are like, hey, what is this man doing really? Hmm? My advice is jump into the thing, <laughs> dance also. <laughs> dance also. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and you will not see <laughs> like he's dancing with the choir. You know, Michelle was so concerned about the maids. The maids. Eh? Hmm? And you know, hmm? I, I realized the other day that these were maids mm. of David's servants. Wow. So they are really low. Yeah. The maids of his servants. Mm. It wasn't the wives of his servants. Oh. It was the maids what of the servants, servants of David. Mm. Sometimes the, 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 the people that mm. you don't expect are the people that have got mm. revelation of what is happening. Imagine. They, they, they had a revelation. Mm. And they came. Mm. And David did not even notice they were there. That's why he tells Michelle, mm. it was not before them. Yeah, it was I before them. It before them. Mm. And if you think they are going to dishonor me, mm. then you are wrong. Imagine. You are going to respect me mm. even the more. Even the more. Because I am doing it before the Lord. Mm. It is not before them. Mm. It is a terrible thing when people out there mm. respect your husband Imagine. and you dishonor him. You dishonor him. Yeah. It is very terrible. Yeah. So let yes. us... Let us be careful. Let us um, let us know who these men are. Yes, that we live with. Mm. And then we see another example of mm. uh, maybe we use a good example, yes. not a bad one mm. this time. Mm. A good example of uh, Esther. Yes, who replaced first first mm. Esther recognized who she was married to. He was a king. He yes. was not a servant of God, but he was a king. Mm. Let's talk about the king as a husband. Yes. There were rules and regulations set yes. of how to appear before the king. Mm. And Esther, I like the way you mm. always say a pastor's wife must be prayerful. Mm. Esther took time to pray. Mm. She involved her maids in the fasting. Yes so that she can prepare herself to appear before the her king. husband. Mm. She did not just go in with mm. disrespect. Imagine. She prepared herself. Mm. She adorned herself. Mm. She went in humility mm. to go and mm. present her case before the king. Yes. He was her husband. Mm. But she didn't take him lightly. Yes. She prayed first in mm. place. Mm. And three nights yes. to get ready to appear. To appear before How do we appear before our husbands? Oh my. How do we appear before our husbands? Mm. We just walk in and other mm. people respect them and greet them with a lot of respect. Mm. They, they address them with a lot of respect. Mm. 
and that is what happened with the maids of uh, mm. of David, the yes. maids of his servants. Mm. They, 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 they respected him. They, yes. they honored him. They didn't look at him the way Michelle looked at mm. at him. Mm. They looked at him mm. as their king, as a man of God, as somebody bringing the blessing mm. of the Lord back yes. to Jerusalem. So Esther. Mm. Prepare to prepare yourself. Do you take time mm. to prepare yourself to go before your husband or you just say mm. things carelessly? Mm. You don't choose your words. Imagine. So it is very important to go back to yourself. Yes. You check where you are going wrong. Mm -hmm. Now in the story of Esther. Yeah. Esther prepared herself to appear before her king, her husband. And there is this other wife in the first mm -hmm. who, who took things lightly. She was so used with the ceremonies that the king was doing mm -hmm. in the palace and appearing before the king such that whenever she is called now at this time, especially that moment yeah. when the king needed him, needed mm -hmm. her, yeah. she took it very lightly. Very light. She did not take it with the seriousness. Mm -hmm. She don't take it with the Syria because she was used. She was used to this man. Yeah, because I think he used to do this often times. Mm. Yes, he call people and throw parties, mm. and then at, at the climax of it, he mm. will call his wife the beautiful queen, Imagine. so that the, his guests can see her. Imagine. So she got used to this. Mm. She said, "Today I'm not going. Mm. I'm busy with my mm. guests also. Yes. So who does he think he is?" Mm. At the moment where you think you have gotten familiar and you mm. can do whatever you do, it mm. becomes your breaking point. Imagine. Yeah. She could not continue mm. sitting on that seat. And could it be that there are some of the pastor's wives who need the husband needs their support. Mm -hmm. He needs the husband needs this woman. Maybe to be there in such a meeting, I want to send you to go and to go and to present me some to represent me somewhere, me somewhere. Mm. and this wife she is very busy like a first she <laughs> don't have time <laughs> for the meet <laughs> you see yeah. she don't have time and she says I, I don't need to go there mm. so and so so and so send him, send him. Yeah? and uh, without knowing mm. they find they are replaced like first but the man will not involve you again. Oh, they the are things. replaced. I was just yes. wondering how they will be replaced. Yes. I was opening my eyes wide to you. Yeah. They will not them. be involved again. They will not be involved again. He yes. will choose another. He will send. Yes, he will choose his own so. Yeah. To be using him to send. Yeah. Why yeah, he could have and sent the have been replaced when you say that it makes a lot of sense. Yes. Be you will not be replaced as a wife, yeah. but now the position of the ministry, yeah. the man will use another person mm. yeah. who is ready for the job. Yeah. Because you are too busy, you mm. don't have time for him, for him, which is so wrong. Or he tells you to mm. accompany him to yes. go somewhere, mm. and you are too busy. You are too busy. I think when it comes to the request of the man of God, like mm. King Hazarus, how he requested first to come. Mm. If a man of God requests his wife to do something, mm. whatever we are doing should become secondary. Very true. You see, when I was uh, growing up, when mm. I was going to school, I had a lot of mm. dreams. Mm. I actually had seen myself where I would be. Mm. And... Uh, I had great plans. Yes. But when I got married to my husband, my husband is that type of a person mm. that wants you to accompany him yes. where he goes. Yes. Yeah. Let's mm. go. Let's mm. go. We go to places together. Mm. Then I I looked at myself and I said, Well, I have got my plans. Mm. I was a school teacher. I love teaching. Mm. I was a, a high school teacher. Yes. In, at a very young age, yes. actually, when I got married, I was already teaching. Mm. Then I got married to him, and I had uh, plans of how to advance myself yes. in my career. Yes. But when I got married to him, I, he's that type that wants you to go to places. Mm. Take me here. Mm. He has taken me 
to so many nations. Yes. I've gone to so many countries. Mm. In so many meetings. Yes. Big meetings, small meetings, mm. media meetings, I mean, mm. everywhere. Mm. Because that is what he required me to do. Mm. I put my mm. dreams aside. Yes. I actually mm. kept them aside. Yes. I could have easily said, I'm too busy. Yes. You just go. I, yeah, I support you. Mm. But I have got my mm. own things that I'm doing. Mm. And I put aside everything and I decided, let me mm. be there when he calls. Mm. If he says, let's go. I am not being all the leader. Yes. I will go. Mm. He says, go do something for me. I have nothing holding me back. Yes. I can be able to go and do that thing. Mm. So, um, that is a, a sacrifice. That's a true. sacrificial life. Sure. You live a sacrificial life. Mm. And I can testify mm. that I have been blessed. Very true. Talk about blessing. Yeah. I am blessed. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can say that without fear mm -hmm. of contradiction because mm -hmm. I am blessed. Yes. And uh, one thing I know mm -hmm. is that that anointing mm -hmm. upon his life, yes. I should respect it mm -hmm. all the time yes. because I, I have reaped the benefits of, mm -hmm. of being submissive. Mm -hmm. You know, the word submission is losing its place even in the church. Very true. Yeah. Mm. But submission, mm. well, how about submission? Submission is when somebody says something, you say yes, you have mm. submitted. Mm. You have submitted your will, mm. you have submitted uh, your, your decisions, your mm. plans, and you have taken his plans as priority. Priority. Yeah. yeah. So um, I have been blessed by doing that. Mm. And I'm going to continue doing it. And you have never regretted mm. you your businesses to join me. Yeah. Wow. I left everything mm. to join him mm. because he needed me like full time. Yes. And I I am there. Which is so good. And you enjoy being there. I enjoy being there. Yeah. So my challenge to the pastor's wives mm. that are watching us today mm. Mm. is that just what what is the heart of your husband? You know, mm. even when you when you think about King Hazaras and the way he's called Vashti, mm. when you look at it with a reasoning mind, you'd say, why parade your wife? Mm. Like it may, it, yeah, it may sound mm. like it is, and I think that's how Vashti took it. Mm. It is uncalled for. It is unnecessary. Yes. So there are some things that your husband will ask you to do and you mm. think they are not necessary. Mm. As long as it is him who has asked mm. Sometimes it's not what it's asked. Mm. It is who has asked. Yes. Yeah. Even if you are told to squat, mm. did you squat? <laughs> <laughs> who has asked you to squat? The mm. squatting mm. is not the mm. issue. Mm. The mm. issue is who has mm. said squat. Imagine, I remember my husband, Norman, even in services, even today, he will call me, I will call my wife to come and uh, greet you, and uh, I know many of you, you don't know her. Mm -hmm. And I am there. A year, another year, I've been there. Yeah. But he tells the congregation, I know you don't know my wife. I want her to come you to see? greet you and to pray for the whole family. Uh -huh. And I'm like, and I, they don't know me. But I was <laughs> majestically, yeah. I take the microphone and introduce, I introduce like they myself you. afresh. Yeah. Uh, like they don't know me. Because he has said it. Yes. I did, and I remember there are some years we did it almost every Sunday. And oh I'm my like, goodness. Does it mean these people they don't know me? Or what is he trying to prove? <laughs> and I feel I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Actually, it came to a point. <laughs> he stopped calling me to introduce myself. And I was like, What has happened? Nowadays, <laughs> I don't hear you call me to come and greet him. Yeah. Introduce myself. What has happened? Mm. And he said, Oh, we are going back there. Yeah. You see? <laughs> you see, it, it, it doesn't matter what you are being told to do. Yes. Who is telling Say you to that. do it? And you have said it so <laughs> so perfectly. And given oh a perfect goodness. example. Yes. So and I am used to actually. Hmm. I'm prepared every Sunday. Every time we have a service. I am prepared. He mm -hmm. might call me to come and greet the people mm -hmm. and introduce myself afresh to them. Yeah. yeah. And I am their mother there. And you have your mother there and you introduce yourself all the time. So first she said, I've been doing this. These are the same guests that come every time. She said, I'm not coming. Mm. 
and she lost her place. Immediately she lost her place, which yeah. is so sad. Mm. So we need to be careful. Mm. We need to take uh, mm. our husbands seriously. Mm. They may have weaknesses. They mm. may sometimes say things that we feel they are off. Mm. But they are anointing mm. of mm. God upon their lives. Mm. So protect them. Amen. You Amen. must protect that anointing Amen. so that you may be protected. It is my prayer that the Lord is going to help us, mm. pastors' wives, as we serve in this part, in this department, in this place that the Lord has put us, that we'll be able to honor the anointing, to honor our men of God that the mm. Lord has given us to serve mm. under them. Yeah. So we, are, we have a lot to do. Yeah. We have a lot to do. Mm. We have a lot to learn. Mm. And if you are there and you are saying, "Oh, I have failed," it is mm. it's not the end of. Mm. It is. It is. It is never the end of things. Mm. You can have an, a fresh beginning. Sure. No matter what age you are in, you mm. may be young, you may be middle age, you may mm. be aged. Yes. You can start afresh and begin doing things yes. the right way, mm. and you will see the the results of it. It's never too late. Yes. It's never too late. You it can pick never. yourself up and and do the right thing and begin to practice what you are saying mm. and you will reap the benefits of it. Amen. So we are welcoming you to to join mm. in what we are saying and what we have mm. we are testifying that we have done mm. and it is not too hard for you to do it. Amen. You will be able to do it. Amen. And be able to see mm. where the Lord will bless, will will will, will take you. Yes. Some ministries have stagnated somewhere, mm. but you can be the cause of a fresh breakthrough. Yes, you can be the cause of a break, a fresh breakthrough, mm. because maybe they stagnated because of something that is being done wrong. Mm. God calls us to grow from one degree of glory to another. To another. We must see ourselves growing. Mm. We must see ourselves uh, moving. Mm. The church is a movement. Yes. Jesus left behind a movement. Mm. So this, when something is a movement, it must grow. You must be seeing. You must keep moving. You must keep moving. Yes. You must keep seeing freshness in mm. the ministry. Mm. So. Uh, it is never too late. It is never late. condemn yourself. Mm. Never say you have failed. Mm. Never feel like, oh, what is being said, I'm too far from it. Yes. That, that is not true. Mm. You can make the best of your remaining life as a pastor's wife. Amen. And excel. Amen. Because God has you in his mind. Amen. He loves you. Amen. He treasures you. Amen. And he has put you in a very sensitive position. Yes. As a pastor's wife. Amen. We have come to the end of this uh, program today. I believe you have enjoyed. I believe you have learned something uh, that you can put into practice. And uh, if you have got any questions or any comments or something that you would want us to tackle in this program, you are welcome to do it. There are numbers scrolling there on your screen. You can call that number or send a text message. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook and on YouTube. We are there. You can uh, follow us and, and be blessed. I know uh, the calling of God upon us as pastor's wives is not an easy walk. It has no manual. <laughs> it has no job description. So it is a challenging, challenging walk and as we come to a close i would like to pray for you that god will walk with you that god will encourage you that god will build you and that you may begin to enjoy working with your husband as a pastor and you as the pastor's wife so i'm going to pray and i believe god is going to touch you at the point of your need and you will be blessed let us pray Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for our viewers. Thank you particularly for the pastor's wives. You have called them. We have seen today that you have called them. You knew them before they were formed in the womb of their mothers. And you separated them 
you set them apart to become wives of your servants. I pray for them. Some of them may be going through challenges. Some of them may be having questions in their minds. Some of them may even be doubting their calling. I pray for them that the Holy Spirit of God will confirm to them that you care about them and that you have chosen them. Lord, touch them and strengthen them. Give them peace and courage to continue doing this work and that they may do it joyfully. I pray for those who also who are having a great time as pastor's wives, that Lord, you will bless them, that Lord, they will be a great encouragement to others when they see them, those who have stepped into their position and they are, they are serving you the way they should. I speak a blessing upon their lives, that Lord, you will continue to uphold them, give them the anointing to overcome everything that may come on their way because the enemy is a schema. Lord, I pray that you will give them to overcome every scheme of the enemy. We thank you for this time and we thank you for blessing your people through this program. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. You are a, a treasure before God and God will keep you. Amen. See you in this same place mm. next time. Mm. I'll ask Judy just to say a word of bye-bye to their audience before Amen. we close. Amen. Thank yeah. you, ma'am. We are glad that you have been following us and uh, we thank God because I know this program is going to transform you as a pastor's wife and it doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter how many mistakes you have made. Mm -hmm. There is a room of co for correction. You can begin again and learn and learn with what you have learned. And I know the Lord is going to do you well. God bless you. Thank you, Judy. Amen. And from all of us, or from both of us, Amen. Is God bless bye you. Bye bye for now. Amen. 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 program is made possible courtesy of the Wilfred Lai Partners. For prayers, inquiry and partnership, contact us on 0800-000-898 or send a text to 23378 and our team of counselors will help you.